So welcome, um, ladies and gentlemen, to this uh, in vivo uh, quest uh, tour session 2020-2021. Um, I'm really happy to uh, be here again as the moderator of this uh, webinar. Um, so my name is Marie-Cécile Damav, and I'm the head of innovation and international affairs in the think tank Agride. And I, am, I have the pleasure to moderate uh, this conference today focusing on wine innovation and the vineyards of the 21st century. Uh, so Invivo Quest is an annual international program of innovation that aims to detect uh, innovative uh, project holders uh, across Europe uh, this year and um, in ag tech and food tech and uh, today is going to be wine tech really uh, and the focus is on Europe this year and uh, so the idea is to find um, um, solutions addressing both climate change and farming transitions. And today in wine tech, we're going to be in the core of, of, this issue, of these issues. Um, so today's conference is part of the session of Indivo Quest uh, that focuses on Southwestern Europe. Uh, so today we're going to have uh, three great panelists uh, to discuss these issues. Uh, we have Bruno Kessler, he's the chief winemaker in Invivo Wine. Uh, we have Gilles Brianceau, he's the director of Innovant, Innovant, this uh, uh, famous uh, wine cluster uh, in, uh, in the Bordeaux area, and Hervé Alain, he's the director of development uh, for the uh, Institute for Higher Education in Vine and Wine uh, in Montpellier Supergroup. Uh, this uh, other uh, innovation cluster uh, well known in, in France in the, in the Montpellier area. So um, to begin, uh, I, oh yes, and you in the audience, I see you, we are uh, quite a number of people connected right now. Uh, you are welcome to ask your questions using the uh, Q&A uh, button uh, on the bottom of, of your screen right now. You have plenty of time to ask your questions in writing so that our panelists uh, will be able to, to answer them. So I'll, I'll take them as they come and as they make sense uh, with the flow of discussion. So to start with, I would like each of the speakers to introduce himself, um, uh, starting with um, Hervé Alain. Uh, so I understand uh, Montpellier um, has a, a pretty famous and international wine cluster uh, in France that brings together higher education, research and innovation. Um, so could you please explain us uh, what is this institute for higher education in vine and wine, um, where, where you work, that, that you represent here, how it operates and what kind of role you play as the director of development. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you first for inviting me in this uh, round table. It makes me happy in uh, several ways. First to discuss topics that are dear to me around the concept of innovation and to meet again uh, here some uh, partners and friends and to strengthen also this uh, uh, better understanding uh, between the world of research and the one of uh, business. We will see how this dimension is important for us. Um, and to introduce myself, in fact, uh, I'm presently the director of the development of an IHEV, the Institute for Higher Studies in Vine and Wine, inside Montpellier Supagro, uh, L'Institut Agro. Um, uh, I created this uh, institute in uh, 2004 inside uh, Montpellier Supagro that had be, become l'Institut Agro Montpellier Supagro uh, for one year because uh, Montpellier Supagro and uh, Agro Campus West from, uh, with uh, Rennes and Angers uh, Economic School have uh, merged into the Institut Agro. And uh, also the Agronomic School of Dijon is about to join us the next uh, in the next month next year and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, make uh, the, the greatest uh, uh, agronomic school in France and it's important to have this uh, visibility and so and uh, to, to uh, gather more um, uh, uh, researchers more uh, research units and also develop um, uh, partnerships with uh, all the great organizations and uh, 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 firms in the in the wine sector. We are very 
uh, link to, to this uh, to this project. Okay. So uh, we have uh, this first um, um, uh, organization with uh, uh, other economic school, and also in Montpellier, we have developed uh, what we call the Kim uh, Key Initiative uh, News uh, News for Montpellier University Site of Excellence, uh, in which we have gathered uh, all the um, uh, people involved in uh, research and. Uh, uh, dissemination of research results and uh, trainings uh, with uh, l'Institut Agro, Institut des Hautes Études de la Vigne et du Vin, and uh, uh, INRAE, which is a great institute for agronomic research in France, and the uh, University of Montpellier. And we have gathered more than 400 uh, uh, scientific uh, people involved in uh, 12 you know, research units as different as uh, uh, viticulture, genomics, uh, uh, yeast, uh, economic research, and all that kind of thing that are um, um, bound to, to work uh, more together, more uh, interconnected, and more able to uh, uh, develop a real uh, dialogue with, uh, with uh, the, the world of business, the world of all the, the, the companies involved in that wine sector. It's uh, very important to, to have this, uh, this uh, better visibility and better lisibility, let's say, uh, in Montpellier now, uh, also linked to the uh, poll, the competitivity poll uh, with uh, uh, Agri Sudwest Innovation, which Gébrion so will uh, speak also about uh, in Innova and all that kind of um, uh, dynamic, uh, which is uh, today, uh, more and more efficient to, to get this uh, ability to work on innovation and to put innovation uh, really uh, on the, the, in the middle of the table uh, when we speak about uh, wine, not only tradition, I would say something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much, Hervé. Uh, I see the starting point in, in, in your innovation cluster is really research. And, and then inno innovation transfer, working with, with business leaders. Um, Gilles, um, you represent here uh, the, the second uh, innovation cluster uh, for, for wine tech in, in France, um, in, in the Bordeaux area. Could you tell us a little more about, uh, about this cluster, Innova? Yes. Hello to everyone and thank you Marie-Cécile and all the in vivo team for having invited me here and uh, your panel is quite is quite nice because I'm just after Hervé in the value chain I mean uh, not research but the link between research and industry and uh, uh, everything linked with uh, transfer so thank you uh, yes Innova, Innova is a wine industry cluster in Nouvelle Aquitaine area, area not only Bordeaux but also uh, Cognac area um, on all the value chain from from the vine to the to the consumer vine wine and market uh, so we have been created in uh, 2010 um, as a unique cluster in France in charge of uh, helping stakeholders of the wine industry um, to address the main industry's challenge through innovation. In fact, our goal is to help innovative solutions, innovative product, innovative services to, uh, to appear, to develop for the wine producers and the wine merchant. Um, so we are kind of of hub, uh, and we we see a lot of things, a lot of project, a lot of new solution emerging or developing in the wine uh, in the wine industry, in our region, but also uh, on, on the national and international uh, level. Um, we regroup uh, mainly suppliers. I mean, all kind of companies from startup to to big companies that develops solution for the wine industry. So some of them are very old company in, in the world uh, of the wine, the wine world, like Coopers or yield providers. But some of them come from other industry like uh, aeronautics, like uh, naturally digital startup, digital company. Uh, so from all other sector, we try to catch innovation, to catch expertise and to transfer it to the, to the, to the wine uh, sector. 
Um, in fact, we have three main missions. Uh, I will not explain all the, the, the action we made, but uh, three kind of mission of missions. The first one is to support R and D project, uh, mainly project uh, led by companies linked with uh, research lab and producers. So we help the project uh, with partnership search, uh, uh, public call, funding search, and so on. We have also a part of our activity, which is a animation, animation of our networks. We organize a lot of events, a lot of working group, a lot of uh, um, things like that, uh, around 30 to 40 uh, per year. And uh, last but not least for our members, uh, we also have uh, services um, on technological intelligence, uh, prof exhibition in professional affairs, uh, export club, things like that. That's what I can say for, for you know, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, we already have two questions that are actually not really questions, but uh, input to uh, the discussion. Well, I'll take them after the, uh, the, the presentation of, of Bruno Kessler. Um, so thank you for these two uh, presentation of these two hubs, innovation hubs, cluster clusters uh, in France. Now, Bruno, uh, I understand in Vivo Wine was, uh, was created in, in 2015. It's not that long ago. Uh, so, how is in vivo wine organized, and how how what does not, does it include? What what is your role in it? Hello, everybody. So I'm Bruno Kessler, chief winemaker in vivo. Uh, as you said, uh, Marie Cecile in vivo wine is uh, quite new in the uh, in vivo uh, huge universe of uh, agriculture. Uh, our ambition is to uh, be one of the, the top uh, wine merchants in France. So with the merge of Vinadis will be number three uh, early April. So um, maybe if you can put the slides about in vivo that will be make it uh, more clearer for everybody. If we can get the slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, no slides. So I will go ahead with, with no slides. Yes, yes, we, we do have the slides. Uh, they are I shared think. on the screen. Yeah. Okay, I cannot see it. Is it, it is shared already? Yes, yeah. Because I cannot see it. Okay. Um. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Gilles, Hervé, can you see them? Yes. Yeah, okay. 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 Is it the one, the Cordier? Um, yes, the, Cordier? The, 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 the one after, exactly, yes. thank yes, you, yeah, great. So uh, what we would like to achieve is really an innovative company uh, to design, as I said, delicious wines for all generations. We are at, uh, already present in, ten, in the 10 main markets and we are dealing with bulk designed specially for many customers, own label business for the retailers, brand is really our focus, plus some estate and chateaus that we are owning. And uh, we are developing brands which have a positive impact, uh, as we said, like uh, organic uh, wines and biodynamic wines. And we strongly believe in innovation because uh, as you know, the market, the wine market is uh, struggling a lot uh, in the last 10 years, specifically in Europe. So uh, our vision is that we need innovation to uh, move uh, the lines. And uh, as our mission is also to, to bring a better revenue and better life to our growers, as uh, today uh, we are uh, an agglomeration of nine big cooperative in wine, we really want to bring back value to our growers. So today will be 600 employees, four bottling sites, one dedicated to bulk and a turnover 450 million euro. So next uh, slide, please. Okay, so uh, we are really focused on our brands. So 
uh, Café de Paris uh, is uh, a brand that we have purchased from Pernod Ricard uh, early one year ago, exactly. And uh, we are giving uh, missions to our brands. So Café de Paris missions are very clear, is to bring back value in France to our growers. So developing new vineyards, innovative vineyards to match the quality and bring more revenue. Uh, so it's really a territory of uh, expertise and innovation with a lot of uh, possibilities and new products. So we are launching this year wine seltzer, we launch uh, low alcohol beverage and so on. Canai is more connected to Italia. It's the dolce test of life. And it's more connected to low alcohol consumption and um, it's really low sugar, low calories. So it's more than the fit wine uh, part. Cordier is uh, the oldest part of the group and uh, we'll be, um, uh, we are reworking the Cordier with the, uh, the huge legacy of the Cordier company on the terroir and more organic and biodiversity in the uh, what we call the Atlantic region. So it can be Loire, uh, Bordeaux, Southwest. Mythic is more connected to Languedoc where we have most of our uh, uh, cops and we are going to uh, link uh, Mythic to uh, regenerative uh, vineyards and biodiversity. Maris is uh, linked to uh, biologic wines, and so with sulfate-free wines and, and also the no-low product. And finally, we are distributing the prestigious Chateau Maris. So that's a, a quick overview of uh, what is in vivo wine and uh, the mission of uh, this new in vivo branch. Okay, I think we can go to next slide. Uh, shall I go on that or shall I finish? Uh, so, um, uh, what we have said is the world is changing and uh, we are really carefully doing the difference between innovation and optimization because a lot of people are mixing the two concepts. Uh, optimization is you have a, a better uh, wash disher with a new program, so it's nothing innovative. Uh, in a, a dishwasher, when innovation is more uh, making wine with no sulfite and uh, all the things uh, which are going through or inventing new sensors uh, or new way of making things. And uh, so in this world of innovation, we are working a lot. We, have, uh, we are setting a research and development department that uh, I'm managing in uh, Cuxac. And so we are working a lot of what we call the free form, form wines, in French, les Vincent. So it could be without sulfite, it could be without alcohol, it can be without sugar, without a lot of things, because we see a, a real area of innovation in, in, uh, in those products. So, uh, Having said that, what are the implications of that? What are the technical needs? This is what I think we are going to discuss all together. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, can we switch to the next slide? Okay. So, uh, as I said, the world is really changing. Uh, a few examples. France is no longer the world's largest market. Now it's the United States. Um, we are moving very quickly from a, a classical way of uh, the, the old agriculture way, more intensive to a, a better sustainable agriculture. And of course, in the wine business, uh, we see a big move on that, just few figures. In France, uh, the wine business globally is decreasing for the consumption when the the same wine business for organic wines is increasing of plus 10% this year. So it's a massive move that we see in the US, we see North Europe, we see a little bit everywhere. So the, the habits of the, the, the people are really changing. 
traditionally, the wine was really uh, needs to be linked to meals, but today, uh, uh, links uh, wine needs to be uh, to to be linked to a way of life, and uh, people wants to share. That's two little. Uh, a poll made by um, the leading company Gallo. 72% of the people wants to share wine. So they don't drink alone. They really want to have fun with the wine. And a lot of people, mostly millennials and the Y uh, generation wants to have new experiments and doing cocktail mixture. So it's, it's really moving the lines. And uh, people are really interested, where does the wine come from? So all that is very important. Uh, the other thing is the what I was saying, the no low products. People want to have pleasure, but to, to uh, take care of their health. So they are very focused on sulfite, on pesticides, on calories, uh, on more natural product. And then we have the big challenges linked to the change that we are all living in our daily life is the uh, CO2, is the, what we call ZRP, which is the zero pesticide residue. And at InVivo, uh, with the impulse of uh, the foundation, and I've seen that uh, Rachel Colby is online, we are pushing the lines in this field as well. Uh, all that move the consumption, and uh, we think that uh, being a young company uh, is really uh, something important because we then can have a very uh, easy, practical view of the wine industry. Next. Uh, thank, thank you very much for this presentation, Bruno. It's, I think it really sets the scene uh, with the various challenges already at the, at the, at the consumer level that uh, the wine industry is facing, changing habits, uh, and changing needs, also some changes in the in the market, in the global market for wine. Uh, consumption has uh, changed uh, from from one country to another, and I know Hervé uh, will have uh, some some comments about that uh, when I give him the floor in in a few minutes. Um, and I think this um, what you mentioned this uh, what is really innovation breakthrough innovation is really needed to address the uh, the strong challenges and the diversity of challenges that. Uh, uh, wine production is uh, is facing right now, if I understand well, and this is probably the meaning of this uh, uh, this slide. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think uh, mainly, but I think Hervé is going to to highlight that uh, in Europe we are in a very conservative uh, environment regarding wine. You know, everything is done by law. And uh, so for many years, we have tried to sell the, those lows to customers, but today people don't care. They, they want to have pleasure, they want to have fun. And so it, it's, a, it's a first uh, real uh, marketing uh, uh, change, that's for sure. And uh, a lot of people have predicted the worst. Uh, I remember in 2007, uh, when I work a lot on the new, uh, sans indication uh, geographic category, everybody was uh, predicting that uh, it will be the end of the French wines and so on. And today this category is booming because it's, it's a field of uh, innovation, a field of liberty. And so we see that in the, the wine industry, in fact, uh, we really have to innovate. Uh, and I think Hervé will highlight that because it's, it's something very important. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, if I understand well, there are two main categories of, of innovations that are uh, on their way uh, right now and that are needed. It's the first one is the uh, environmental challenge, especially the, the climate change challenge uh, that pushes uh, vine production to adjust to, um, to higher temperatures and, and uh, lower uh, access to water, uh, water restrictions. Um, and uh, so this question about, is it possible to move the, the regions where vine is, is, is produced, is grown right now? Um, 
And uh, of course, the environmental challenge, you mentioned uh, zero pesticide residue, the environmental challenge uh, uh, that uh, grapevine producers have to, to uh, probably reduce the, the chemi chemical use that they, um, that they have on, on, on their, uh, on their uh, grapevines. Um, and the second category is the changing consumer habits. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the, the fact that uh, uh, the, the French wine industry is, uh, and, and wine sector is pretty conservative. So it leads me to talk about tradition. And I, I know that Hervé um, is, uh, has really this interesting approach of balancing uh, tradition with innovation, specifically in, in, this, uh, in this sector. Uh, I, if I understand well, uh, Hervé, your, your, according to you, the reconciliation between tradition and, and innovation in the wine sector is key uh, as the, 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 it's one of the main challenges of, of the wine industry right now. Yes, thank, thank you very much. So if you allow me to, to develop that in a few minutes. Sure. Uh, okay. So thank you very much. I, I, um, uh, I would like to, to highlight maybe this, uh, this question of uh, innovation very um, specific in the wine sector. First of all, there is a, a effectively a, a, a bad news. It is uh, uh, wine is definitely not an essential product, even though you would be right to think that one lives a better life with, with it. I think so, but it's not the case for most of the uh, people on the, uh, the planet. Thus, the question of its sustainability is real and linked uh, to that of its ability to create value and markets. Indeed, uh, we deal with a very paradoxical sector, which is able to both create and also to distract value like no other. On the one hand, the price of a bottle of wine on its simple label variation and with an almost identical chemical composition can increase from one to 1,000. But on the other hand, we have abandoned in 40 years 200,000 hectares only in Languedoc, for instance which was the largest vineyard in the world at first, bringing back the production from uh, 33 uh, million hectoliters to 11 million hectoliters about, and with almost the same price per liter of uh, uh, appellation of origin uh, results, for instance, since 1960. So we have uh, to face with um, three, um, three figures, three indicators. First, the concentration of consumption in the world. We have two countries that represent 70%, 72% of the world consumption. The second observation is a and, decrease. And, I'm yes. sorry, these, these countries are the, the United States, of course, and China, is it? Yes, in, in it, of course. Not only Europe, you are, uh, you are right to, to stress it. The second one is decrease, decreasing of the regular decreasing of the consumption in France, divided by three in 60 years. And the third one is a world wine trade, which uh, was only about 12% in 1990, and that is, has increased to 45% today. That means uh, uh, multiplied by two in value in 20 years. So the question of access to these new markets and therefore become a fundamental issue. It has first led to introduce marketing in the wine industry to better understand the adaptations necessary for these new consumers. Remember, and I know Bruno remembers it well, it was absent word and even a taboo word until 1990. Some of these new consumers throughout the world are adopting wine without any respect of our tradition and consumption habits. This invites us to consider the limits of tradition in the value chain and our ability sometimes to become prisoners of this tradition. French wine conception 
as indeed often valued and maybe overvalued tradition. It has made it such a dominant axis of communication that uh, it has ended up almost to hide the dimension of uh, innovation in the discourse, be it intended for consumers or for any stakeholders in the wine sector. At this stage, we must answer clearly two crucial questions. The first one is, does innovation have its place in the wine industry? The answer is definitely yes. Besides, we have never stopped innovating even if it was often in the shadow. Think we would never have got out of the phylloxera crisis otherwise. Simply, the dissemination of technical progress is being realized step by step with a social control and within frames that are different, different of the ones outside this sector. And besides also, innovation in, is undoubtedly the key point for this industry to survive. The second question could be, is innovation possible in a sector that has secreted so many rules, specifications and organizations that Bruno was mentioning and that are apparently so many obstacles to innovation? Here again, the answer can be definitely positive. Certainly a quick reading could lead to think that one industry would be by nature unable to innovate. It's true that it has made very early the choice of an apparent rigidity of its practices. Like for instance, the prohibition of aromatization and even the wetting of wine since 1907. Also the specifications for wines with geographical indications that represent 93% uh, of French production seem to definitively freeze many practices. And the cautious attitudes of many professionals mixed with a strong administrative weight leads sometimes to a real pessimism. But at the risk of sounding provocative, I would like to show that these rules and institutions are necessarily changing and changing quickly to get adapted to the great challenges of tomorrow and more than we could think at first sight. And for that, I would like to share one illustration. In charge of working with our foresight team with uh, uh, Franca Grimaire um, uh, and uh, Inre, uh, on the consequences of adaptations in order to face climate change, and uh, my Cecile was speaking of climate change of a real challenge and she was right. We could recently observe three very striking, striking phenomena. The first one, before 2012, it was very difficult to raise this issue in a professional assembly simply because very few among them were aware of it and often unable to convince the skeptics. But only five years after, between 2016 and 2017, we have led with Fassa Grimaire uh, collaborative approaches in the major French wine regions involving more than 500 professionals to present our four foresight scenarios to face climate change. Firstly, a conservative scenario, status quo. Secondly, a nomad scenario with modifications of the vineyards areas. Thirdly, a liberal path. And fourthly, an innovating scenario that allows to maintain the vineyards in their current mapping. As a result, this fourth scenario was preferred by more than 70%. Surprising in an industry supposed to be bogged down in tradition, isn't it? I would add that since 2017, our major institutions of the wine sector have asked us to support them in the reflection on the national strategy to face climate change. And at the same time, innovations are multiplying in all the wine associations and regions to offer ways of adaptation. It would have been unimaginable 20 years ago. Resistant varieties, foreign varieties, modification of microbiota, and more generally 
OIV and um, Europe, uh, European Union are assessing many new practices to be included in the next world norms. We can imagine it will be the same choice to face not only climate change in the next years, but also all the major challenges. I mean, I mean market globalization, societal demands, health and environmental expectations to which the digital transitions can be added to. They will no longer leave indifferent the governance of our wine sector. The commitment of the main organization may seem late. One can imagine that it will be all the more resolute and massive. It can and should lean on the major reserve centers in France, such as Bordeaux and Montpellier, uh, which have grown very massively in recent years, building real clusters, you have, we have presented it, as uh, Shirley Branso can testify to. More research units and teams, better united and above all interconnected to respond with solutions and complex therapies to increasingly complex issues. It would be the case, for instance, for with the large research program called Vitae on the release, release, the complete release of pesticides that has been financed for three million euro, euros and that, I, that I'm co-piloting with François Delmotte in, in Ray Bordeaux with teams from uh, Bordeaux, Montpellier, Dijon and Colmar. Okay, this, thank, thank you, Hervé. Okay. It's, 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 uh, it's very striking, and this uh, number that you pointed, 45% uh, of the wine consumed in the world right now is imported, not produced yeah. in the same country of, of consumption. It's, it's a sh huge number, and this, uh, this change uh, from 12% in, in 1990 to 45%, almost half, percent, half uh, of, of the global consumption is imported wine, is really striking. And uh, it's a sort of a wake-up call for uh, for stakeholders in in this industry. Um, the uh, I understand this this impact of climate change is is so important that uh, it seems from the various scenarios that you have explored with France Agrimer that it's either uh, uh, these people innovate or uh, they they need to change job because there's no other way or they need to move to some other areas to to uh, to to produce wine. So I understand it's. Uh, the, the, the pressure is, is so strong that there's no other way than innovate. Um, very interesting. Um, Gilles, I would like to hear from you uh, about the, the various um, ways uh, that uh, Innova is exploring to tackle all these uh, great challenges. And I understand that sustainable viticulture is a, is a key approach to it. Yes, thank you, uh, Marie Cecile. Yeah, but just before a few words to 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 make the transition with with Hervé, um, you know, uh, tra tradition and uh, and innovation. Bordeaux is often shown as a very traditional and very conservative uh, winemaking area, but um, I I often say that uh, in at the end of the sixties, so it's long but it, uh, let's say it's uh, the, the age of an old vine 60 or, or 70 years uh, Bordeaux was was mainly planted with with white wine white vines sorry and producing white wine uh, it was something around 50 58 percent of Semillon grapes in Bordeaux and now it's uh, 80 percent uh, red and mainly Merlot and we have just we Bordeaux uh, I, I just uh, changed is uh, is a specification for Bordeaux uh, AOP introducing new grapes like um, Toriga Francesa, like uh, Albarino, in order to try new new grapes to adapt to climate change. So it's going fast and uh, faster. So what will be the next Bordeaux wine in 60 or 70 years? I don't know. Perhaps it will be a pink uh, a rose, a rose cremant or sparkling rose. I don't know, we will see, but it's just to see that behind um, this image of tradition, you can have uh, great change and great adaptation because innovation is adaptation. And uh, adaptation to the main challenge of the sector, so climate change today, in input reduction and in particular pesticides, elimination of glyphosate, which is a very, great challenge for wine producers uh, here in, in, in Bordeaux, but everywhere in, in 
nearly everywhere in France and in the world. Or even if you go to the market, disintermediation in the wine market, uh, all these challenges are major problems for wine growers and wine merchants. So they need new solutions to tackle this challenge. But what is interesting also is that these, um, these challenges are new opportunities and new markets for, uh, that are opening up for, for innovative companies, whether they are startup or companies already established the, um, in this market, in the wine market, and which will know how to develop their offer to, to, to propose new solutions. So in Innova for, for, for 10 years, we have been at the heart in, of, this, uh, of this innovation issues in, in, in the wine industry. And we see uh, the demands and offers of innovation evolving depending on the challenge that arise. It's, it's quite funny, and uh, I, I agree with Hervé. Uh, a few years ago, yeah, climate change, uh, some people was not convinced by, by climate change, you know, climatoseptic. Right? We don't heard about that now. <laughs> but, um, and, uh, and then now it's a, a great challenge. And just to convince, you have to, to look to the innovation ranking of the main trade shows, such as Vinitech or CTV. And what you can see is that the, 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 the innovations that are in the palmares are, are, are changing. And now a lot of, of this innovation are linked with the, with the climate change, with the pesticide reduction, with environmental issues. And it was not the case uh, five or 10 years ago. So what do we see? Finally, what are the emerging trends today in terms of innovation in the wine sector? In a few minutes, uh, a very large panorama because each kind of innovation, we could, we could spend uh, half an hour on, on each one. Um, what we see more and more are predictive stat stat statistical models. I mean, uh, especially on yield prediction because yield prediction, yield prevision is a great issue for, for, for winemakers, for vine growers, mainly for those who are who are in, in, inside big groups. When you have 100, 1,000 of hectares, you need to have a little bit of prevision of what will be your, your harvest at the end. And um, also you have more and more uh, weather uncertainties uh, due to, to, um, to climate change, um, extreme conditions also due to climate change. So it becomes more and more uh, necessary to, to, to predict yield to estimate yield. And because of uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, because of progress of algorithms, because of progress in terms of uh, image analysis, uh, we, we begin to have some uh, interesting solutions. We, we are partner of a European pro project called uh, Vinci, um, which goal is to develop statistical for forecasting tools to support the, the productivity of the wine sectors and boost international, international export because there is a link between yield prediction at the plot level and also yield prediction at a regional level and impact on the market. When you have uh, hail or frost in a, in a, in a region, uh, you know that in the years to come, you will have big problem on the market. Let's see Bordeaux in 2017, frost, and then 2018 was quite difficult because you lose market share because of the price of the wine goes up. Um, in the okay, same, in the same kind of models, is it uh, artificial intelligence, for example? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's deep, more more deep learning. You know, deep learning. You, okay. you can give you can give images, images, and 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 then the the, okay. the algorithm learn how to predict the yield. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also the case with uh, um, forecasting the, rings, the risk of vine disease. Um, this, this kind of, uh, of tools are very useful for that. So you can see if you, if you walk through a, a show like Vinitech or CTV, you can see companies uh, saying, okay, this is detection, this is detection, we can, we can see the disease. Yeah just coming i'm not sure it's completely uh, operational today but i think in the in the years to come we will have really interesting 
things in terms of uh, um, early disease detection. And it's mm -hmm. quite important because with this kind of tools, you can reduce your, your pesticide uh, by 20, 30 or 40 percent, which is quite important. And this, so this if is part of precision viticulture, I guess. Yeah, 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 naturally, but uh, now it's not only a word, <laughs> it's also becoming yeah. a real, real solutions that can be used and not only used by uh, happy few, which have, uh, I mean, resources and money to, to, uh, to, to, um, to develop, to implement this kind of solution. But I think in the years to come, uh, it could become uh, solutions that will, uh, that will, will, that will develop and will be implemented in, in more and more vineyards in, in France and in the world. Okay, um, to, to, to address this, uh, this challenge of how to, uh, to, to deal without glyphosate and herbicides in general, I understand robotics are also developing. Yeah, robotics are developing, I think for, for two different reasons. Uh, it's developing, but it's mainly, uh, there is a strong uh, demand, in fact, from the vineyard, even if we know that it's a kind, uh, it's really disruptive uh, technique for, for, for vineyard, for vineyard, and because of two different challenges. The first one is naturally the end of glyphosate. We, we need to find a new way to weed, uh, uh, to, to, in, in, to do weeding in the, in the vineyard. Um, and the other reason, the other reason is a uh, problem of uh, of um, the lack of labor in, mm -hmm. in 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 the in the in the vineyard. It's quite difficult to find people to to conduct a tractor, and um, so you need to find new solutions, um, even if they are not completely operational. Uh, we see more and more startup and also big companies interest, being interested by uh, by this uh, by these robotic solutions. Mm -hmm. And but in fact, you have you. I think you have to have in mind a very large conception of robotics. Uh, na naturally, you have those we know like Nayo, like uh, Viti Rover, like Citia, uh, Vitibot, Game Culture, and so on. But in fact, it's we. I think we have to speak about automatization and robotization mm -hmm. because. Yeah. Uh, you have also interesting initiative uh, of uh, automatic tractor. I mean, just letting um, letting the tractor goes into the rows of uh, of vines. Yeah, but we have still. It's it's really interesting. We we had a, a previous session of, of in vivo quest focusing on focusing on uh, robotics, and then, so that's why I was asking. It's uh, it's interesting to see how it's developing and, and address several challenges at, at the same time. I'd like to to give yeah. the floor to to back to Bruno uh, now because the, yeah. the time, time is flying. Um, so so Bruno, what are the various um, uh, innovation paths that in vivo wine is exploring right now to, to address all these challenges. If we go more to a downstream point, also addressing the, 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 the challenges of a changing con cons consumers and, and consumption. Your, your mic is on mute. So I've prepared some slides. So what is our vision of the wines and product of tomorrow? And once again, as we are, our mission is really to create new products and to bring uh, profitability to our growers. So uh, uh, regarding your question, uh, Marie-Cécile, I think there are four areas where uh, innovation can really bring uh, solutions to the, the, the the wine market, and especially uh, as uh, Hervé was saying, uh, the, the competition is rude. And uh, of course, the, the luxurious products are doing quite well, but uh, the everyday wine, I will say, uh, uh, don't forget that most of the market, especially in France, is around uh, three to four euros. And so we have, uh, we are not going to move our cups. We are not going to move our vines. So we have to adapt as Hervé was saying, that's the fourth scenario. So of course we need more innovation. So the first workshop uh, we are working in is really, what can we do with the waste? And can we bring more value with those waste to our growers? 
because in fact uh, we have grapes that we process we have uh, we we want to reduce water use we want to to reduce the energy use so uh, there are a lot of fields where in vivo agriculture in general is working on with partnership with microsoft or with total and so uh, we really want to, to work on a European level on the byproducts, on new molecules that can be extracted. So the idea is that anyway, all label business, especially in France for the supermarket is a, a very strong business, but uh, the margin are very low. So how can we bring more value to our growers uh, using, uh, uh, in fact, the byproducts and bring more uh, value to them. They are very good example in Bordeaux. Is uh, Caudalie is very famous in Bordeaux uh, with the Ozu's wonderful adventure. And so that's really one thing we want to work on. Next, please. Okay. Um, then what we see, there is an area of innovation regarding the NOLO wines or product, um, because uh, <clears throat> I give you one example. One of our brands, Bonne Nouvelle, is the leading uh, disalkalized wine in the French market. It's uh, 3.5 million bottles of uh, product. And uh, we really want to make it even better. It please a lot of people because you cannot sell product without pleasing people. But we are sure that using new techniques, uh, we can make it even better and develop uh, even more volumes. And uh, we have a, a world strategy around those products because those products are using grapes. And that's uh, most of our growers are growing grapes. So uh, that's another area on which we are working uh, very hardly. I give you one example for the NOLO. When you remove alcohol, you lose a lot of uh, sweetness. So you compensate it by sugar, but sugar is not very fit. So we are working with some labs on the, some specific uh, yeast extract to, to bring some uh, natural, on a natural way, more sweetness to this product. Next, please. And then uh, I'm not going to be very long on that because Gilles uh, exactly said what we are all thinking about uh, how can we reduce the residue. Of course, prediction is very important. So the uh, uh, artificial intelligence is uh, a universe on which we are working. Uh, that's the, the big data, the agri big data is uh, a field on, on which uh, uh, I think we will uh, will be very efficient on the reducing the, the pesticides. Uh, of course, we can also imagine, and there are some works doing on, if you cannot uh, avoid it uh, or go up to what Hervé was saying is no pesticide at, at all. Uh, that's another way of, of doing things. And uh, we have planted this year some hectares of uh, resistant varietals for Café de Paris uh, with one of our cups. And uh, of course, we can also imagine eliminating those uh, molecules. Uh, and uh, all the uh, predictive uh, all what is prediction is going to be a, a key point that for sure, but uh, Gilles uh, really put it on the table and I think it's, it's, uh, it's definitely an area where uh, it's going to be massively important. And the last one uh, is uh, what I have said is the, the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, more on the wine side, because we have, we spoke about uh, climate, vines, and so on, but uh, in vivo wine, uh, as it said, is more focused on selling wines. And uh, we are doing quite a lot of uh, zero sulfite wine, and we have a, a big success, specifically in the US, where you can use the NOP organic. Uh, but 
if I dream a little bit, uh, so this year we have done nearly 1 million bottles of those wines. Uh, the growth is, is very quick. It's crazy. We have doubled the, the sales this year. So there is a huge demand, that's for sure. But uh, today we do it because uh, uh, my team uh, uh, is used to, to, to do it. But we, will be, we would like really to work on the uh, mac microorganism biodiversity to, to make it more efficient. We would like to, to have more uh, sensors for the uh, redox potential. Uh, we are managing oxygen, uh, and uh, if we can get a better sensor, that will be even uh, more precise. Uh, we are working with some labs on the new uh, product that are coming mainly from yeast and from oak to, to be natural uh, anti-oxidation uh, and to reduce the RH2. And uh, we are working on lot, a lot on the... Um, the, the bottling to reduce the oxygen uh, peak at the bottling and for, during the transport. Uh, we would like to anticipate. So once again, as Gilles was saying, is the yield production, but we would love to have a predictive analogy as well. And, uh, and of course, uh, as we are going in 2024, obliged to put the ingredients on the wine labels uh, uh, to use as less as possible and as natural as possible. So all those four areas are quite wide and I think there is a big field for uh, experimentation and innovation. Thank you, Bruno. Uh, it's, it's really striking to see that predictive models are, it could be useful both at the production, at the grapevine production level, and also at the winemaking uh, level. Uh, I see also that uh, this circular economy approach is, is something that you and, and Gilles uh, mentioned to upgrade byproducts. Um, so th these are very promising way, ways to, to address the, uh, the number of challenges. Uh, so um, I'm sorry, we are running out of time and uh, maybe uh, one or two words from Hervé and then uh, I, I just need to mention the, 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 the not question, but uh, remarks from, uh, from uh, this one person in the audience. Uh, Bruno, you mentioned uh, micro Microsoft and, and this person uh, is suggesting a number of solutions. Hervé, just two sentences. Uh, in reaction to uh, the, the, the two previous presentations. Thank you very much. Very interesting, this, uh, this uh, uh, the, the first um, um, testimony of uh, uh, Roger, and uh, that proved that uh, we have many uh, uh, links and uh, ways to, to collaborate in the future, also as we do uh, already, but as we will do more and more between the, the centers of uh, Bordeaux and Montpellier, but uh, undoubtedly with other ones too, uh, with Dijon and other ones. And uh, the second remark is a very um, uh, uh, innovative also the way uh, in Vivo, Vivo Wines with uh, Bruno Kessler is um, engaged now in a, a very, uh, very foresight uh, approach and very large approach without um, uh, that um, takes into consideration all the aspects uh, uh, of the, the, the value source for the, for the wine. Uh, when, uh, as I said, uh, the, the future of wine is not written, is not uh, mm -hmm. uh, established, is not sure. So everything is to be um, imagined now and it's very uh, uh, encouraging and very uh, uh, pushy to have uh, collaborations with uh, uh, between uh, the research world and uh, the business world uh, in, in that way to imagine what will be the, the world of uh, wine tomorrow because one maybe one only thing is sure is that it will not be the one of today or of, uh, uh, the, yeah. the, the day before. 
So there, there is definitely room for innovation, despite this, uh, this pretty conservative and, and traditional um, sector at first. So that's uh, the, the good news. <laughs> that's Maybe you can put it. Okay, okay. Uh, just to mention uh, these uh, various solutions that are indicated um, uh, in the audience. Uh, I, I just leave you read the, the, this, uh, these comments. Uh, Equivity, uh, Vintel from ITK, uh, Capvin from Capvision, Spirit from Technomade, uh, and a final solution uh, developed by Bruchard Valin. These are various solutions that are mentioned in the, in the, in the Q, on the Q&A um, uh, button. Uh, so I, I, I leave you uh, look at this, and, uh, and if you think that these are, uh, uh, can make sense or um, uh, in your various clusters or, or solutions, then uh, uh, you, you may uh, uh, be in, in contact with, uh, with, these, uh, with these people and, and unless you know them already. But I need to wrap up because it's, uh, it's the end of this uh, one hour discussion. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to, to the three of you uh, for these uh, great contributions. It's really interesting to see that uh, the there is a lot of room uh, for innovation and there's no other way actually to get to get out of the of the trap where the the, the sector is right now and uh, many people actually are working on innovation in in various uh, in, in various angles to to tackle the the challenges that uh, uh, vine and wine production is is facing right now so and we saw the importance of clusters and uh, of this very horizontal way of working uh, between the research um, innovation uh, producers and, and uh, science makers really uh, to, to address these. So thank you very much again to, to the three of you. Uh, the, the next uh, in vivo uh, quest session will take place on March 23rd and the focus will be on the bioeconomy. Uh, so if you were interested in today's discussions around the circular economy and I'm sure it's going to be really interesting for you to uh, to, to be with us again. So thank you very much to all and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.